Hello Ample Players, Reverend here and today I'm talking about the 1.5.5 update to AGM, AGT and AGL. That's the Martin, the Taylor and the Alhambra Luthia classical guitar. And we're in the settings panel right now. Here is where you would change the location of uh, the INS folder which contains the samples. So if you wanted to move the location of the samples, what I suggest you do is copy them first. Because if you move it and then open the interface, you'll get an error because Ample Guitar will not be able to find the samples. So if you copy it first, specify the new path here, and then go back and delete the old location, everything will be hunky-dory. A new master tune feature allows you to tune to something other than A equals 440 hertz. That means you can play in any tuning or match something that was recorded in non-standard tuning. A MIDI out button here allows Ample Guitar to output MIDI. And I'm going to be talking about that in just a second and I'm going to leave that on. Down here, the memory consumed by loading Ample Guitar is shown. And over here, the maximum number of playing voices can be monitored in real time. So if you play your song, you can see how many Ample voices are playing at any given time. Now, when you get a meaningful reading from this, you can set it as the max number of voices in this area here. Now, the default is 96, and this, is, um, this comes from, for example, when you strike a down, uh, a down stroke on a chord, you've got six ringing voices. When you use the doubler, you've now got 12. Then comes the resonance samples, bringing us to 24. The pick stroke volume, the pick stroke samples, to, brings us to 48 voices. And if you now put, uh, make an upstroke before the release time has elapsed, you've gone from 48 to 96 voices in no time at all. So this is a good default. You're unlikely to exceed it, but if you wanted to uh, raise it because you can see more voices uh, are being used here, then you could make sure that you have the right number of voices specified here. Whatever number is in here cannot be exceeded. Once you've specified a maximum um, and you accidentally or deliberately play more than the maximum specified, the number of voices will be limited. The low performance button is a way of conserving resources. Now it significantly improves CPU load but it significantly changes what you get. So I would call this a work in progress and my recommendation is to leave it off. New in 1.55 is uh, the control click to return a control to its default value. So you have been messing and playing around and you want to return to what you had. You simply control click. I'm control clicking now. There, you can see that returning to, and that works with any control. That's a change. I'm not going to tell you what it used to be to avoid confusion and because I don't know. The path to a tab file is also remembered by your project now. That's new in 155, so if you have a tab file loaded, um, the project will remember that location. Okay, that brings me to the first of the three conversion features. First of all, we can convert a measure of tab to a strum pattern. And you do that by selecting anywhere in the measure. For example, I'm going to go to, let's say, measure three. I like this measure. I want to save it as a strum pattern for my own purposes later. To select the measure, I can select anywhere in the measure. Place the cursor anywhere. Doesn't matter. I click the Seek button and I choose which pattern I want to overwrite and there is my new converted pattern. So now I can go to Save Pattern and put it in my 
custom stuff or wherever. Okay, so you can convert any measure of strum. Let's take a look at pattern two. Memorize that for a second. I'm about to overwrite it, so I go back to my tab file. Oh yes, I love this measure here. I click Seek, and this time I'm going to overwrite pattern two, and bingo, there it is. And off I go and save it as a pattern. You can obviously save up to eight and save them as a pattern bank. Very cool feature, you can snag stuff from tab files. Next up, I can convert I can convert a strum pattern to MIDI. Uh, I need an AGM or an ample guitar as my virtual instrument and a MIDI track and you need to set the ins and outs this way and you also need to remember the minus 50 offset here. Then I'm going to press record and whatever um, key triggers the strum pattern. In this case it's a note C3. I'm just working with default pattern number one. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to record and press C3. Okay, and when I play it back that's what I get. Okay, why would you do that? Well, you can take this data and use it to drive another virtual instrument and I'm going to show you that in the next file. Okay here is that same C3 which triggered pattern one only this time I have a second MIDI track and I'm pointing to a piano which is loaded into contact five. So when I play this data the output goes to the Ample Guitar Engine, but it's playing a piano. Okay, now a piano doesn't have um, stroking volume and it doesn't have mute depth so obviously the piano cannot respond to those uh, controls but wherever the instrument that you choose uh, to load here wherever it can respond it will for example in the strum time let me show you that So as long as the instrument you've chosen to drive with this MIDI data can respond, then it will. And this is kind of cool because you can set up a strum figure and when you want to vary the song, you can choose an instrument to copy that figure as closely as that instrument can. Okay, there's one final conversion here. And this is where we are converting a tab file to MIDI data. In this particular file, I have an A6, which is going to trigger the play button down here of my tab file, and I've got a, a strummer demo loaded. So when the cursor encounters A6, it will trigger the play button. The output will come to this track here, and I will be able to um, uh, I'll be able to capture MIDI output from the Ample Guitar playing the tab file as follows. I'm going to record on this one and off we go. Right, now you might want to do that because you want to edit the MIDI data in the file. There it is, there's the whole thing. Uh, you might want to change it for other reasons. Uh, the velocity is the most likely um, parameter you'd want to change. Or you can use this data to drive another instrument as we've just seen. There's one other thing that 1.55 can do and that is to automate transposition. Now what you would do, assuming you're in strummer mode, you have to be in strummer mode, strummer has to be on, 
and you have used all of these chord slots and it's still not enough for your song, you can transpose on the fly using a controller, a MIDI controller. And the way to do that is to press Alt and click on the, transp uh, the transpose button and choose any empty controller slot. There are plenty of them. Three is the first one. You then click Learn. So three is going to be understood as controlling uh, transpose. And then in your data, you would choose controller three here and your little draw tool and you can transpose this way. So that this is where you would. And the values would look something like this because the range of a controller is 128 and you're gonna divide that by 12, zero to 10 having no change whatsoever, then 11 to 20 is one semitone, then two semitones, three semitones, and so on. And the reason for that is because you might run out of chords. You might have filled all your chord slots. So you can now use, uh, for example, let's look at that chart again. If I wanted three semitones, I would have to uh, put my controller in the range 31 to 40. So right here, for example, and I'm looking at numbers here. So 31 to 40, that's going to give me the transposition. The rest of it I can, uh, I can get rid of. So that's going to give me the transposition that I want. If I want to uh, re return it to normal, obviously this is what you do with your controllers and you can transpose anywhere, any amount. Okay, I think that pretty much covers the 1.55 update. Just make sure when you're doing these conversions that your ins and outs are set correctly. For example, this A6 is going to go to MIDI in and trigger the playing of the tab file and down here, of course, the MIDI out is coming to the input hence resulting in the data. Okay, on behalf of Ample Sound, thank you for watching.